Good afternoon and welcome to the afternoon update on Money FM 89.3. For those of you joining us on social media today, it's good to be back with you. It's been a week since we last spoke online. Welcome to everyone on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Now, coming up on this one hour special, I'm very excited to share with you that we're going to be joined by Singapore rapper Will Smith, as well as Audrey Pereira, who's the executive producer of the True Colors Festival. We're going to chat with them in just a bit. The festival has just in the last hour or so made a very exciting announcement. We're going to find out from Audrey exactly what that is. Also coming up on the show this hour, we're going to be joined by Jeff Howie, market strategist at the SGX. We're going to catch up on all the big market moves this week and what to look out for in the week ahead. So keep it here on Money FM 89.3. Let's now welcome Audrey Pereira and Will Smith to the show. Audrey, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today and welcome Will Smith. Hi. Thank you. Hello. Good to have you both with us. Now, I've just seen a release just out in the last few minutes that the True Colors Festival has made an exciting announcement for this year. You're going to be live streaming for free online for the festival that takes place from the 19th to the 20th of November. Congratulations on that announcement. Audrey, let's start off, though. And can you tell us what is the theme of this year's festival and how does it link with uh, the live streaming? Okay, the theme is One World, One Family, Rachel. Mm -hmm. And it's really about how we're all connected, how we all share the same emotions, the same feelings, and how we all love music for its power to heal and inspire. It'll shine a light on the uniqueness of each performer and showcase their stunning talent. And I say there's never been a more important time in history to celebrate diversity and head for a more inclusive society where everyone can be seen, heard, and respected. Tell us a bit about the history of the True Colors Festival. Well, it started a while ago, but mm -hmm. it evolved from, from wanting to turn the spotlight on artists, performing artists with disabilities, and we've uh, widened our, our ambitions. So now it's about diversity and inclusion because we are, after all, normalizing the idea that people are different, right? We are, we're trying to move away from the idea that we are segmented into communities, move away into a, a more embracing idea. So the concert this year is really a celebration of diversity and inclusion. And how many artists have you got performing this year, Audrey? I know that Katy Perry is the big name, but you've got a lot of other big names attached to the event. Yeah, Rachel, we've got a fantastic lineup. We've got almost 100 artists from 13 countries. Wow. Uh, of course, there's the global megastar Katy Perry. Uh, and the audience is in for an unforgettable two-hour concert. Okay, and the concert, while it's taking place in Japan, people can live stream and they can join yourself and your artists uh, online as well. What do they need to do to log into that? Well, they just need to uh, either go to our website, True Colors Festival, the concert 2020, uh, look up for the live stream tab, or they can go straight into our True Colors Festival YouTube channel and subscribe to the channel and then they'll get updates and alerts as we draw closer to the concert dates. Why did we do this? Because we really want as many people as possible around the world to experience this concert. Uh, whether you're there in Tokyo, and the wonderful thing is you can now be there in Tokyo because the mm. borders have reopened, right. or you can experience it wherever you are in the world. And speaking of the wonderful artists and lineups that you've got, Will Smith will be performing this year at True Colors. Tell us about what you're excited about for this year's festival, Will Smith. Well, uh, I mean, personally, I'm just, I'm quite excited about the idea of coming together um, probably, you know, with artists around the world and stuff like that. But I mean, on on but on a personal level, I think I'm quite excited because I'm able to share my message, my mm -hmm. message, and I think that's yeah. 
and what is the message that you're going to be sharing at the festival? Okay, so for my set, I believe I'm bringing something about, well, the song is about loving yourself. It's a, it's a gentle reminder that, you know, we are our worst critic. And sometimes, mm -hmm. you no, know, actually, most of the time, we are pretty harsh with ourselves. So it's a, it's a song that I made for, you know, it's just a nice reminder for me that I should be gentle to myself, love myself a little bit more, and give yourself the credit that you deserve. Can you give us a preview? Oh, I, well, okay, since the song is not released yet, I mm. think you may need to go to Japan and watch this. I see what you did there. Oh, we can log into the live stream, right? Yeah, well, it won't be the same, but... I'd love to go to Japan, but it's not on the cards for me in November. I'll be tuning into the live stream, but I'm really looking forward to it. And Will Smith, I'd love to hear more about your story as well. Perhaps you can share with us your musical journey. How did it start for you? To be honest, it starts in my bedroom. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I do, I mean, I, it, it all started in my bedroom. I, I created a mini studio here, so I would record all my demos, all my ideas, inspiration, and then I guess, I guess, people caught on, and then and then they liked it, and then they say, hey, we we want to push this idea on. Let's let's polish that song, and let's see where it brings you. Um, thus far, NDP and and a couple of um, other big productions as well, so. This November, I'll be in Japan for the True Colors Festival. Yeah, that's right. You performed at uh, the National Day Parade here in Singapore. And on the back of that, you've shared with us your message not to be too hard on yourself. And that's what you're going to be sharing at this year's True Colors Festival. But I want to mm -hmm. find out from you. You mentioned starting off your musical journey in the bedroom. But what does music mean to you personally? Well, at the beginning of it, mm -hmm. music was my coping mechanism. It's something that I look forward to. Um, simply because I got a lot of negativity in me during my mm -hmm. early years. But I guess now, um, it is life. Yeah, music is life. Music is identity. Music is what I do. Um, music makes me happy. Music makes me money. Um, I think I can see myself here for a long, long time. So it is definitely life, yeah. And when you rewind and you look back on those early days when you were just starting out in your bedroom, would you have ever thought that fast forward, you'd be performing at the National Day Parade, you'd be performing on a stage in Japan with the likes of Katy Perry? No, absolutely not. No, no. I, I, may, I, may, I make music because I simply want to make music. And then um, I thought nobody was going to hear it. I'm like, oh, okay, it's out somewhere on SoundCloud you know, previously. And now, and now I'm on Spotify. Um, so I think the magic happened because I feel like I was doing it because I really love it. And I wasn't expecting anything out of it. Yeah. And speaking about making magic happen, Audrey, that's exactly what you're doing by bringing everyone together for the True Colors Fe Festival in November. Can you talk to us about your approach and perhaps some of the things that you've had to do differently now where post-pandemic, as you mentioned, Japan's open up again. But what has that meant to you as the executive producer of this festival? Well, it's been, it's certainly been complex and, and continues mm -hmm. to be complex. You know, we've got distance geographical distance, we've got different languages, time zones, um, cultural differences even. But, you know, we're dealing with these challenges. And uh, what I can guarantee is that the concert will be one of the most moving and inspirational concerts that anyone will see this year. And it'll certainly be an important step forward towards greater inclusion. You know, I'm, I know you're wondering about Katy Perry um, wanting to be involved 
Um, mm. It's not because she didn't want to be involved because of the disability factor. She wanted to be involved because she recognized as, that these are some of the finest singers, dancers, and musicians in the world. Um, and so the audience is going to be treated to this amazing two-hour concert that spans everything from pop, jazz, and classical to rap, hip-hop, gospel even, um, original film content, multimedia. Uh, it's going to be, I believe, spectacular from what I've seen so far. And um, yeah, honestly, it's going to change the way we view difference and disability. Now, we've got a question that's come in from one of our listeners. Will Smith, this is for you. They want to know, who are your inspirations, both in music and life? Oh boy, um, I don't I don't have any music inspiration because uh, the reason why I started making music is because of my life situation, um, who I am and what I was dealing with. So the inspiration came from my struggle and 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 the lack of better understanding of who I am, uh, what I am, and and how how different I am also. Um, um, but now, uh, in, the, in terms of like music, or, or rather in the signature aspect of music, I would say mm -hmm. Joey Badass, um, Drake, yeah, um, oh, Bruno Mars, yeah. Oh, yeah, Bruno Mars. We all love a bit of Bruno Mars as well. And what about your inspirations in life? Who inspires you? I would, I would say... I think my dad, I think my dad is, he's always, you know, showing me examples of no matter how good your life is or, or, or no matter how things are working out for you, um, keep your, keep yourself grounded. Remember that, um, remember that when uh, great opportunities normally comes with great responsibility as well. So, you know, me being me, I represent my community. So make sure uh, whatever I do, it's aligned to, to um, the positivity of, of the community and, and our social impact as well. And speaking of social impact, I just want to go back to Audrey for a minute and find out from you, Audrey, what would success look like to you and what do you hope to achieve from this year's festival? I think for us, uh, it's, it's the recognition that you know, 20% of people around the world live with some form of disability. And this community hardly sees themselves, the, the children in this community hardly see themselves on a mainstream stage or on screen. So one of our hopes is that by, by these communities seeing people like themselves on a stage with a global icon like Katy Perry, um, we just want to inspire them and make them feel that they can follow their dreams, you know? Um, we want to shatter perceptions of what it means to live with a disability. Um, and I think I can safely say that you will walk away from this concert with a change in your perception. Um, yeah, Rachel. And speaking of inspiring others, so Audrey, you've spoken about inspiring others. Will Smith, we had a question from our listener about who inspires you. Now, I want to ask next, for those that are listening in that perhaps are inspired by your story, what would you say to them if they're looking to perhaps go down a musical route or an artistic route, but they're not quite sure how to start, or maybe they're even doubting themselves? What message would you, would you share with them, Will Smith? Well, I can, I can say one thing. And, and I think this applies to everything, you know, it's beyond music. Well, everybody have uh, limitations and everybody have uh, something that they're good at. And it's a mixture of those two things that makes you. So you got to find a balance in between. And I believe if you understand your limitations and you understand your capacity, your, cap your capability, uh, in whatever you do, you'll thrive. Yeah. 
Wonderful, wonderful words there as well. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of that with us. Audrey, just give us a quick reminder. Where are tickets available and how can people log in and when is this happening? Okay, we, it's happening on the 19th and 20th of November. Uh, if you visit our website, truecoloursfestival.com and look for the concert 2022 page, uh, you can find the ticketing information there. there. There are several options. And you can also check out the live stream tab. Uh, we've just begun to upload new information about how people can enjoy the live stream. But I would say one of the first things that you should do is subscribe to the True Colors Festival YouTube channel. And that way you'll definitely get alerts as you get closer to the day. We really hope that, that, that people enjoy this concert in the way they can, whether they travel to Tokyo or whether they watch the live stream. Um, and a shout out also uh, to, to the creative team. Uh, most of the creative team that's creating this amazing concert is from Singapore. And we really hope that Singaporeans will get behind this and really be proud of what we're bringing to the world stage. Okay, Audrey. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you, Rachel, for having me. Thank you. We've been speaking with Audrey Pereira, who is the executive producer of the True Colors Festival that's happening from the 19th to the 20th of November, as well as Will Smith, who is a Singaporean rapper. He'll be performing at the event. You can go and find out more about Will Smith on his Instagram as well. We'll be tagging him after we post this this podcast up onto our website as well. Stay tuned with us here on Money FM 89.3. We've got the news coming up in just a bit. We also have Jeff Howie joining us in the three o'clock hour. He's going to talk to us about how markets have been faring this week here in Singapore. We had Nodex numbers come out at the start of the week. He's going to give us his thoughts on that as well as some of what are some of the key trends. Willie and I, we've been talking a lot about REITs this week. So we're going to get the lowdown from Jeff on what's been moving there as well as get analysis of the stock picks that Hongbin and I had shared with Jeff last week. So just a recap, Jeff and I last, uh, Hongbin and I last week, which stocks had we, we chosen to speak to Jeff about? We, we'd chosen Singtel and SIA. He's going to give us a summary of how both of those performed in the last week. We're also going to chat with Jeff about his thoughts perhaps on what's going on in the UK. So keep it here on Money FM 89.3. We're going to have a short break for those of you joining us on social media, but we will be back with you very soon. So keep it here online. The afternoon update brings you the latest news and views to keep you informed. Tune in Monday to Friday from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Only on Money FM 89.3. Boss, hey, here my mobile phone plays.
social media for Money FM 89.3's Friday Feeling broadcast. Are you feeling that Friday feeling, Willie? Yeah, I mean, this is su- such a TGIF, you know, uh, mood. Uh, mood. Yeah, exactly. Be inspired by the interview we just had with Audrey and Will Smith. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to tune in online? Yeah, I, I mean, this guy is very inspiring, very motivating. And I oh, always love like the hero's journey, right? Mm-hmm. You know, going down having to struggle and challenges and picking himself up. I mean, that's amazing. And that's the power of music, isn't it, as well? You know, music, I'm a strong believer, it can really influence your mood. You could be having a bad day, but you hear a good song, um, and it can immediately, well, it immediately perks me up, always. Yeah, exactly. And music, the thing is, right, it sort of tells you what your current mood is as well, because mm-hmm. different points, you know, you listen to different songs, and that sort of exudes the kind of emotions or feelings which you have at the point. What kind of music do you like, Willie? Oh, I used to love um, boy bands. Backstreet Boys is really? my favorite. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, okay. I think they came, I'm not sure, I think Westlife had a concert in Singapore. Um, I'm not sure if they just had it or if they're actually coming F1. to town. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And you know, sometimes when I'm feeling down, I'll just uh, pop into my YouTube and just listen to the Backstreet Boys. I see. So do you, do you listen to, to music when you're trading? Um, no. <laughs> so it's... Uh, when I when you're stressed trade, out with yeah. the markets, um, you need something to kind of balance that out. Mm, I think I probably listen more to what the market is saying than the music. <laughs> I see. And speaking of what the market is saying, we're going to catch up with Jeff Howie from the SGX in just a bit. He's going to talk to us about some of the key market moves from this week. What do you want to find out from him, Willie? Well, a couple of things. I mean, it's it's always the big movers like the Singapore banks and mm-hmm. the REITs. I think I want to get this, you know pick his brains on what's really going on there. I mean, REITs have already came off quite a fair bit. That's right. And we're looking at, uh, when you're looking at REITs for the moment, I popped in a stat for Jeff, uh, because looking at REITs for the last quarter, I mean, they've gone, I mean, they've really been pummeled, haven't they? Yeah. And it's quite surprising though, because REITs in the past, they've outperformed during inflationary periods. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, REITs are always, so the blue chip REITs are usually the safe haven, you know, mm-hmm. when when rates or there's market volatility, investors tend to move their money, you know, from more of the riskier assets to the big blue chips, right? I mean, you have capital land, you have mm. commercial trust, and so on. That's right. And Willie, so you have an online blog. It's called Dividend Titan. Yep. What inspires you to write your different articles? Yeah, I mean, I've always wanted to share my thoughts down on paper, but I'm always afraid to do so. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm always afraid that people will laugh at me. And it wasn't until during COVID where we really were forced to just stay at home where I decided, okay, you know, I just want to do something and just share my thoughts because most of my thoughts are usually kept, you know, within myself. And I'm old, I've am i always been afraid to, you know, um, embarrassed that people would just laugh at what I said. So, so what was that catalyst moment then for you, though, when you thought, okay, I'm actually going to put pen to paper. I'm going to give it a shot. <laughs> I'm going to put down my thoughts. And hey, somebody could listen. It's like Will Smith shared with us just now. He made music. He popped it up on SoundCloud. He wasn't expecting anyone to tune in. And you know what? He performed at the National Day Parade. Now he's heading over to Japan next month to perform oh, with Katy Perry. Very impressive, man. I mean, when I heard about the live stream earlier, I was like, wow, this guy is really worth watching. I, I mean, he drawn, you know, uh, me to want to actually listen to him. Mm-hmm. And for me, I mean, what forced me to actually sit down and start something was, it, it was really COVID, right? I mean, when the announcement came saying that, hey, you know, everyone has to be stuck at home for at least a month or two, I was thinking, oh gosh, what am I going to do um, at home with two kids? I can't do anything, right? And <laughs> other than trading in the markets, why not do something which I've always you know, secretly wanted to do, which is to just write out my thoughts. And what kind of response have you had since you started up the blog, Willie? How has it grown? Hmm, I think it's very interesting because at the start, you know, when I was writing a Dividend Titan, I mean, it was also really because um, I invest for my mom as well because mm. back then she was going to retire and I wanted to find a way to actually supplement her income. You know, she had CPF savings and all that, but also to add on more, you know, through investing through income. So right. um, that, that was one of the key um, points. And when I started writing, rather than attracting people, you know, in the 30s or the 40s, there were people in their 50s to 60s emailing me about um, my articles and, you know, what sort of income or how they, get, how they should get started mm-hmm. dividend investing. 
because I put my stuff about my journey on how you know I built the portfolio for my mom and how it has sort of created some form of recurring income for her. Well, Willie, that's fascinating. And we're going to get back to that in just a bit and what your thoughts are and Jeff's thoughts on where the markets have moved this week. We're going to end up with one sports update for you. We're broadcasting it live on Money FM 89.3. We're going to listen into this update from Shazad Haq before we give a time check, weather check, and let you know what's happening out on the road. Stay with us on Money FM 89.3 could get some reprieve today when rain is expected, which could help with firefighting efforts and improve air quality. In sports, the Milwaukee Bucks held up against a fourth quarter surge from the 76ers to launch their NBA season with a 90-88 victory overnight in Philadelphia. The women's tennis two-time Grand Slam champion Victoria Azarenka has ended Madison Key's hopes of reaching the WTA finals this year with her 6-4, 6-7, 6-1 win over the American in Guadalajara. And in golf, the first round of the CJ Cup saw Korean rising star Tom Kim matching FedEx Cup champion and title holder Rory McIlroy as the duo shot identical 566s to live one stroke back. Those were your news headlines from the Straight Stop. Time now is 3.04 p.m. Thundery showers over many areas of Singapore this afternoon, and it's going to be a wet weekend as well. We've got more thundery showers forecast tomorrow morning. Taking a look at the temperatures tonight, a cool high of 32 and a low of 23 degrees Celsius. Checking in on what's happening out on the roads, it looks like a lot of you are heading home early this Friday to enjoy a weekend, and rightly so. We've got heavy traffic on the AYE towards the MCE, heavy traffic on the PIE towards the airport, and heavy traffic on the CTE toward, that's just after Brattle Road exit. Also be cautious on the SLE, we've got an accident there towards the CTE, that's before Woodlands Avenue 12 exit. That we might have missed. You can share it with us via SMS or WhatsApp at 8855-0893. But please send the message through only when you are safely parked. You're with Money FM 89.3. Jeff, all good? Has been a trusted global partner to Singapore traders for more than 15 years. Our award-winning trading platform and mobile apps provide user-friendly features with real-time alerts, giving traders access to opportunities. on Money FM as we share with you the latest news and market action on IG Morning Market. In addition, let your trades take you further and earn Chris Flyer miles when you trade with IG. Terms and conditions apply. Find out more at IG.com slash SG today. CFDs are leveraged products. Losses can exceed deposits. For risk warning, risk fact sheet, and full disclaimers, please go to our website at IG.com slash SG. This advertisement has not been reviewed by the Monetary Authority of Singapore. <laughs> You are listening to the Afternoon Update on Money FM 89.3 or watching us if you're joining us on Facebook, YouTube and LinkedIn. I hope you're having a wonderful Friday. We have come to the end of the working week and what a week it has been for markets. I'm Rachel Kelly and I'm joined in the studio today by Willie Kang. He's sitting in for Hong Bin Jong who's having a wonderful time on leave today. Very much deserved leave. Willie, it's been great to have you in the studio with us though the last two days. Yep, very good afternoon Rachel. <laughs> and everyone on social media, and of course, we've got the wonderful Raushan in the studio today, making sure we all behave as normal, especially on a Friday, it's needed. Okay, coming up on the show, we're going to catch up with Jeff Howie in just a bit to talk about how markets have fared this week. We had uh, non-oil domestic exports, the Nodex numbers out at the start of the week. We're going to get his thoughts on that, as well as how REITs in Singapore have been performing, and perhaps his thoughts on the outlook for REITs. 
events as well. Jeff's going to be joining us in just a bit. But Willie, I want to get uh, your thoughts on how markets have fared this week. Mm, I mean, if you see that markets have been quite disappointing somewhat. I mean, mm -hmm. look at the sell-off in the markets on Wall Street over the past week. And really, it's because of a few factors. Number one, you see benchmark 10-year benchmark yields have mm -hmm. actually spiked beyond 4.2%. I mean, this is the first time it, it has actually spiked up after a very long while. And it also shows that, you know, there's this thing called the inverted U curve, where you are looking at short rates going much higher than the long end of the U curve. So this could also be an indicator of, you know, a potential recession. And that's what really causing the markets to be really jittery here. And you know, it's funny you mentioned the inverted yield curve. Yeah. We're coming up to Halloween, and that's Michelle Martin's <laughs> favorite Halloween costume, Ooh. an inverted yield curve. <laughs> okay, now let's welcome Jeff Howie and catch up on how markets have fared this week. You are with Money FM 89.3. We are joined, of course, by the one and only Jeff Howie, market strategist at the SGX, to digest all of this week's major market moves. Jeff, how are you doing? Hey, Rachel. Good, good to be here. Hello, Willie. Hello, hello, Jeff. Had a good week. Yeah, and uh, a lot of rain at the moment, so I hope you can hear me okay. But uh, you're looking very smart today, Jeff. You've got a jacket on and everything. What's going on? Oh, I Suited and booted. I had a couple of presentations yesterday. One mm. business, but I just haven't been able to get around. So busy. Jeff, we're losing you a little bit on audio. We're going to catch up with you. I think uh, perhaps your headphones. No, that one. Nope. Okay. Let's uh, let, let's get moving and take a look at where the STI is at at the moment. Currently in the red, down over one and a half percent at 2,975 points. Decliners leading the pack at the moment, 286 to 183 advancers in terms of volume so far. 902 million securities worth, well, million shares worth uh, 628 million dollars changed hands so far today. Jeff, what have been some of the highs and lows of the market this week for you? Yeah, look, I think that uh, decline down to 29.80, thereabouts where we are now. Mm -hmm. So that's a 2% decline uh, following the 3.5% decline we had last week, Rachel. Within the STI, uh, as of lunch, we still had four gainers for the week. Young Zijung Shipbuilding, Gunking Singapore, Emperor and Thai Beverage. But uh, when you look at the least performing STI stocks for the week, you had five REITs among the eight least performers. Also among the five least performers, we had Jardine Matheson Holdings and Hong Kong Land, and that has coincided with the Hang Seng Index losing more than 6% this week as well. But outside the STI, tech has continued the previous week's declines as well on that US trade policy announcement uh, made on the evening of the 7th of October which was um, basically noting it was the U.S. was restricting its exports to China. Um, that was semiconductor exports, and that saw AEM, UMS, Franken, Grand Venture Technology, as well as ISDN, lose on average around 10% so far this week. One interesting bright spot, um, uh, uh, particularly with the rain that we've been seeing, um, <laughs> Crude, crude palm oil futures are up 9% this week. So mm. that brings the month-to-date gain for crude palm oil to 20%. So, so far this week, we've had Golden Agri Resources up 4%, First Resources up 3%, and Bumitama Agri up 4%. Um, uh, and really, concerns over rainy weather has really triggered um, the production of the top producers in Indonesia and Malaysia. Uh, but those gains, I just, I just said, I, I think that's actually month to date, not week to date. Apologies. Jeff, uh, talking about what's been happening this week, other than the weather, we've got to talk about those Nodex numbers that came out earlier in the week. We saw Singapore's key experts. They turned in a bit of a dismal performance for September. I mean, it was still a gain of, what, 3.1% for September. What were your thoughts on the numbers? 
Yeah, it was it was still three point one percent year on year, but month on mm -hmm. month it was down four percent, and that was led by um electronics. So year on year, pharmaceuticals were pretty strong, but month on month, year on year, electronics were pretty weak. It brings the non-oil domestic export growth for the first nine months of this year to 9.1%. That follows 12.1% growth last year. It was foreseen somewhat earlier this year that we would have this weakness in the numbers because if you look at exports to China, we saw more year-on-year -year compression in September. They declined 34% in September after declining 18% in August. And this was foreseen, um, particularly I think Ministry of Trade and Industry maintained back in May that mm -hmm. the growth outlook for some of our outward orientated sectors um, had weakened. And China, of course, is a key market for petroleum and chemical products from Singapore. So its economic slowdown is adversely impacting Singapore's export growth. I think um, also looking forward uh, in the future, it is expected to taper off. Global growth is slowing this year, as we know. It's going to slow from, according to the IMF, from 6% last year to 3% this year, and then 3% again next year. A similar slowdown is also expected in the volume of global trade. So we had a bumper year in 2021. Global trade was up 10% in 2021, but it's expected to come back to 3% this year and 3% again next year, um, following a pretty similar trend to uh, to GDP. So belt tightening uh, really is important um, because I think that's a key factor that's determining the outlook for growth, the outlook for inflation. Um, global inflation is forecast to rise from 5% mm. last year to close to 9% this year. But the good news is rather than see a wage price spiral in both inflation and nominal wage growth, we are, um, according to the IMF, seeing uh, our inflation rate decelerate somewhat next year to 6.5% and then to 4% in the year after in 2024. Mm. Just a quick question, Jeff. I mean, you talk about global growth. How do you think the global growth or the slowing of this growth is going to impact the businesses and companies in Singapore? Oh, it's, it's definitely, it's it's been having a significant impact, Willie. Uh, it's, there, there's been uh, concerns that, um, you know, that the, the major line, I guess, is that the inflationary expectations curb growth. And this is what's been happening. If you look at some of our businesses, um, particularly in vibrant ASEAN, where we know, you know, like take Vietnam, for instance. Vietnam has been relatively strong. I think it takes pole position for, uh, for GDP growth across ASEAN this year. And you've got Jardine Cycle and Carriage, which have an 11% interest in Vinamilk which is the top F&B producer listed on the Ho Chi Minh Exchange. But for the first half of this year, they had higher import costs and transportation costs impacting their revenue for, for that business. So that, that's, how it's, that's, how, that's how, it's, uh, how it's playing out. It's, it's the impact of the inflation impacting the growth, which has seen this repricing across Singapore stock market as well as global stocks. I want to talk now about S REITs while you, we've got you with us, and you you've spoken about inflation. We've also got to talk about interest rates because we've seen this higher for longer interest rate environment it really hit the REITs here in Singapore. But it's interesting because REITs in the past they've outperformed during inflationary periods. What's your take, Jeff? Yeah, look, I, the in terms of total return, they. S REIT sector so far this year is down 18% year to date, while the FTSE Apronar REIT index globally is down 28% year to date. So there's a little more than inflation impacting the outlook for REIT. Um, I think it's really due to the, I guess, the sudden cost push nature of this bout of inflation and the very significant policy response which has followed in terms of interest rates that's had an impact um, on this sector, unlike it's had impacts in the, in the years before. But nonetheless, the, if you look at our FTSE ST REIT index, it's now trading at a 15% discount to book value. That's close to those first quarter of 20, 
2020 lows, as well as the last quarter of 2011. Um, really, when you look at uh, the inflationary environment and basically how those higher interest rates might affect capital for a further growth for the REIT sector, uh, in terms of debt levels within the S REIT sector, it does maintain an average gearing ratio of around 37%. And the gearing ratio is simply mm. assets divided by total debt. That's lower than the regulatory limit of 50%. And a lower gearing ratio, it really indicates a greater capacity to undertake more debt when needed for future acquisitions. Um, whereas the, on the opposite, the higher gearing ratio could lead to credit concerns, particularly during economic downturns. But the sector is also, I should point out, secured on average around 75% of their borrowings on fixed rates. Mm. They, they, I should point, can I point one more thing out? That, sure. Uh, you want to move on? <laughs> yeah. It's the S REITs when you, um, you look at what they've been doing over the last couple of years, which have been fairly tough. There, they, there is a propensity to, to utilize proactive capital management. So aside from just making acquisitions, they can look to diversify, recycle, or even merge REITs. Okay. And, and what's really important is that, the portfolio acquisitions, they're not just funded through debt, but can be funded through secondary fundraisings, such as rights issues and placements. In fact, we saw close to half of our S REITs listed here um, basically announced asset acquisitions last year valued more than $12 billion. And that acquisition drive has continued in the first three quarters of this year. We've had something like 18 REITs announce acquisitions in the vicinity of $7 billion. And that included six trusts that announced acquisitions in September, valued at um, between two and a half billion and three billion, and including maiden acquisitions from Digital Core REIT and Daiwa House Logistics Trust, and they uh, got both those REITs, as you might recall, listed last year. <clears throat> Jeff, I just want to get your thoughts here. I mean, you just mentioned about gearing ratio. You know, where Singapore REITs, they they are still pretty much um, healthy. Um, but the thing is, do you think that based on the debt which they have, do you think that Singapore REITs were, re were actually prepared for the rising rate environment? I mean, Singapore REITs, they typically have very short debt to maturity, I mean, roughly about two to three years, that's one. And another thing, I mean, on top of the acquisitions, you know, they, which, which they're having, um, despite that, going overseas would actually subject them to, you know, the foreign currency exchange losses. So what are your thoughts here? You know, do you think that they are prepared for this environment? Yeah, I think so. It really de also depends on the sector, uh, really, because they are very highly diversified across different property types. And <clears throat> how you, I guess, impact the, or how you assess the impact, you can look into the rental reversions and whether those rental reversions are going up or they're going down. If they're going up, that's more cash flow to help, you know, obviously facilitate the debt requirements. And that, you know, the industrial REITs, for instance, um, there's, we have uh, <clears throat> less than 10 of them here in Singapore, but there's one that is a industrial REIT that's all located in Singapore, you now all those properties, and it saw a 17% positive reversion in the second quarter of this year. And that was the ninth positive quarterly reversion over the past 10 quarters. But the thing is, the slowdown in global electronics trade, it has made a dent on manufacturing set sentiment. That flows through to the demand for warehouses and depots and, and logistics centres and so forth. So that is one risk to be mindful of. The other risk, as you quite rightly point out, is that many properties in Singapore have, uh, they, I'm sorry, many REITs have properties listed all across the world, especially across Asia Pacific. So. So the, the remaining seven of the eight industrial REITs, for instance, do have properties outside of Singapore. So, Jeff, just to round up really quickly, we've got to talk about the stocks to watch that Hongbin and I highlighted at the end of last week. I'm not going to pick a stock this week because I'm going to wait for Hongbin to join us back next week. But let's take a look at those two. So I highlighted Singtel and Hongbin highlighted SIA. Just taking a look at how both of them are performing today. Singtel currently down just over 2% and SIA also in the red down 0.7%. Yeah, so where's Singtel? $2.40, thereabouts. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, two two forty one. Okay, well, that's down from two dollars fifty three when we were speaking yep. last week. Mm -hmm. um, what was interesting, you had that, you've had that decline, but for the first four sessions of the week, um, you actually had institutions add to their net position, uh, net their net uh, institutional inflows so far this year. So what I'm saying is, you've got around eight hundred million Sing dollars of net fund inflow so far this year for Singtel. Mm -hmm. And that did not change much over the past four sessions. In fact, I think it was up by around eight million. Uh, for Singapore Airlines, um, the in September operational report, it showed that we, you know, had seen the continued momentum in the travel recovery. Uh, I think it was, if I'm not right, it was a total. If I'm not wrong, sorry, it was a total of 2.1 million passengers in September across SIA and Scoot. So that's up two and a half percent from August. That was in the September operational report. We mm -hmm. still have another two weeks before we get the first half numbers from Singapore Airlines. But both your stocks, I think, they're still up year to date. I think Singtel's up six percent in the year to date. SIA is up around one percent in the year to date on a total return basis. But um, for Singapore Airlines, they, they did note that the demand remained pretty strong across all regions except for East Asia, where we still have some restrictions in some of those key markets. Yeah, I mean, following up from SA, I mean, what, what are your thoughts on travel-related stocks? I mean, now that the, mm. the economies are uh, open up, I mean, what are you looking out for, Jeff? And, you know, are, are there any sectors you would avoid? Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting, right? Because uh, UMS for some time has been noting that avionics would be a really important demand driver for semiconductor chips, uh, particularly with reports coming out from the US in terms of the increasingly wide, wide field of application of semiconductor chips and their role in uh, aeroplanes going into the 2030s. Um, there's also the increasing electrification of, of, uh, of the industry and looking for ways to reduce um, carbon emissions. Jeff Howie from the SGX joining us today. Jeff very quickly before we let you go i know it's a friday and we're standing between you and the weekend what are you looking out for in the week ahead please jeff your mic is muted would you like to unmute your mic and join us again he's still talking if you can see him on facebook live that's okay we'll catch up with jeff again next week for his wrap on how the markets have fared in the week ahead thank you so much for staying with us here on bunny fm 89.3 and joining me and willie willie since you watch the market so closely maybe you can tell us what are you looking out for in the week ahead yeah i'm actually looking out for the singapore banks um i mean third quarter u.s banks mm -hmm. results they posted pretty good healthy revenue so i think it's interesting because a lot of singapore banks their results tend to follow what the u.s banks results post mm. so you know um companies uh, banks like UOB is releasing their results on the 28th of October, DBS is 3rd of November. So I think it's something interesting to look out for. You know, with this rising rate environment, will this our Singapore banks benefit from the rising rates? I think this is one question we should go ask for. And they do make up such a heavy portion of our STI. Yeah, exactly. And what's more interesting is that, I mean, these banks, they are right now yielding at about 4.5%, which I think could actually, you know, attract our local investors to come in. We'll have to see and keep a close eye on those earnings <laughs> updates. Well, Willie, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank it's you. been absolutely wonderful having you in the studio for the last two days. And we're going to just have to bring you back <laughs> in, regardless of whether or not Hongbin is on leave. Sure, okay? of course. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. And thank you for everyone to everyone for joining us on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn as well. And having a behind-the-scenes look at what we get up to in the studio. Now, don't forget, tomorrow for weekend mornings, Saturday mornings, Glenn Van Zupfen, he's got a great lineup of guests for you. He'll be streaming his show live on social media, and he's just sent me a quick preview of who he's got coming on his show tomorrow. At 9.15, he's going to be joined by the Makan Sutra food maestro, KF Sito. He's also going to have an international news review with the one and only Steve Oaken. He's going to catch 
catch up with a Singapore creative studio, Method and Madness. They've won awards all over the place and they've worked with uh, on a number of global projects with the likes of Ed Sheeran. He's also going to chat with uh, multi billion dollar pet care industry uh, professional they're going to well they're going to talk about the multi billion dollar pet care industry so be sure to join Glenn tomorrow morning on Facebook YouTube and LinkedIn that is from nine o'clock tomorrow morning thanks for joining us here on the afternoon of date we've got another half hour left of the show on Money FM 89.3 don't forget prime time is up next so switch over from your socials to your radio and we will see you there Money FM 89.3 Money FM 89.3